In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform a multiple regression in SPSS. The example data set is the study that was interested in using variables such as education and IQ in order to predict annual earnings. So the predictor variables are education and IQ, and the dependent variable is earnings. So to conduct the analysis, click on Analyze, Regression, Linear, and put the dependent variable in the dependent box and education and IQ in the independence box. So this is going to be a method enter or forced entry regression and you can see the methods down here. We have stepwise remove backward and forward but method enter is the approach that was used in the textbook and it's the approach demonstrated here. Click on statistics and you can see that confidence intervals is an option. You want to select that in this case, it's only going to give me the unstandardized confidence intervals. And you can click on descriptives and part and partial correlations. And I'll look at collinearity diagnostics and normality of residuals in a separate video. So click on continue and click on OK. So here are the results. So here are the descriptive statistics, earnings, a mean of $43,314 a year with a very big standard deviation of 43,000. This suggests the data are not normally distributed, but I'm going to deal with that in a separate video. Education has a mean of 13.15 and a standard deviation of 2.67. An IQ, a mean of nearly 100 and a standard deviation of nearly 15. Here are the correlations between the variables, all positive correlations. And you can see that SPSS produces one-tailed p-values so don't be fooled here. In my opinion, they should be two-tailed, but SPSS produces one-tailed p-values in this regression utility. Here are the variables entered or removed. This is method enter, so all the variables are entered no matter what. And in this case, we have IQ and education entered into the regression equation, and the dependent variable is earnings. Model summary has the model R, which is 0.361. When you square that R value, you get R squared, which is 0.130, which implies that 13.0% of the variance was accounted for in earnings based on scores from IQ in education. The adjusted R squared is equal to 0.123, and that means that if we would feel more confident inferring this result of the population, so result is probably closer to 12.3% of the variance accounted for in earnings rather than 13%. And here's the standard error of estimate associated with the predictions. So quite substantial errors in predicting the dependent variable because the standard error is equal to $40,375. Here's the ANOVA table, which is testing the statistical significance of the R value, or the R squared value, both. And it's P less than 0 0.001, so it's statistically significant. This R squared, and by consequence R value, is statistically significant with 2 and 247 degrees of freedom, an F value of 18.53, and a P value less than 0 0.05. Here is the coefficient table, and we can see that the constant was estimated at negative $56,000, or 56,261, and that is obviously a nonsensical possibility, so it's the constant in this case is the answer to the question of how much would somebody earn if their education and their IQ or zero. Is it possible to have an IQ of zero? No, probably not. But the regression analysis isn't considering plausibility. It's simply calculating a regression equation that will maximally predict the dependent variable. And in this case, the intercept is equal to negative 56,261. And it's statistically significant. So it's statistically significantly different from zero. The education variable is associated with an unstandardized slope of 3,756. So this implies that a one unit increase in education, so one extra year of education, is associated with an extra annual earnings of $3,756. And that is statistically significant, with a t-value of 3.21 and p equal 0 0.002. IQ finally has a unstandardized beta weight of 501.98, so for each one unit increase in IQ, you can expect to earn an extra 501, nearly $502 a year. And the standard error is 208, and the t-value is 2.402, 2 
and that is statistically significant, be equal 0 0.017. Because it's less than 0 0.05, it is statistically significant. Now, as written in the textbook, these are unique effects. They cannot be accounted for by each other. They are unique to each other. The standard errors, if you divide the unstandardized slope by the standard error, you will get the t value. Now here are the standardized beta weights, and the standardized beta weights have interpretations relevant to a one standard deviation increase in the independent variable is associated with a 0.232 increase of a standard deviation in the dependent variable. So in this case, when you want to make comparisons between beta weights, you'd really want to focus on the standardized beta weights, although you'd have to test them for statistical significance. Here are the confidence intervals associated with the unstandardized beta weights and the intercept. So we have lower and upper bounds, and they don't intersect with zero. So because the unstandardized beta weight lower and upper bounds are positive, it implies that the p-values are less than 0 0.05. And finally, here are the semi-partial correlations that I think are important to interpret in a multiple regression. So this is the unique association between education and earnings controlling for the effects of IQ on education. So it's a unique correlation. And you can square this correlation and speak of percentage of variance accounted for, just like you can for IQ. You cannot square a beta weight and speak of percentage of variance accounted for. So what we found here is that together in combination, education and IQ in a regression model can account for 13% of the variance in earnings. And each predictor is associated with some unique contribution to the regression equation based on these p-values over here. And we also imply that these semi-partial correlations are statistically significant. We actually base it on the same p-values over here. So that's how you can conduct a multiple regression analysis, the one that was described in the textbook.